Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. It is uh, Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. And welcome back to another video. Today, I want to talk to you guys about recognizing fake vintage cast iron when you're out on the hunt. It is out there. And actually, what you're looking at here are two sample uh, salesman demo miniature waffle irons. Uh, this is a Wagner. Sydney O, February 22nd, 1910 patent. There's one on the left and one on the right. And one of these is the genuine article and one of these is not. And it'd be interesting if you could uh, write below in the comments, is, is, the, is the real one on the right side? Is the real one on the left side? And can you tell the difference? Now, you're not going to actually... When you're out in the wild, you're going to be faced with one of these when you actually look at it, and you may not know. So I'm going to get into that in a little bit. And But first, if you're new to my channel and you want to continue seeing content like this, please give me a thumb up. It really helps my videos. It helps my channel. It encourages YouTube to recommend more of these videos to folks like you that like to watch them. Also leave a comment below and like I said, is it on is the real one on the right or on the left? If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them also. And if you're new to my channel and you like to see videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell to be notified of uploads when they're available so you won't miss anything on my channel. All right, so back to this. So one of these is real. We're going to get into the video now so you can see how I came across this, I came across three fake or copy knockout knockoffs or reproductions as they're called this year on vintage cast iron. I've been collecting it now into my fourth year. I've been buying actual real cast iron, modern and vintage for about five years now. And there's always a steep learning curve. And even I am continuing to learn the longer I'm in this hobby. It's, uh, there's a lot to it, you know, especially when you get into restoration like I do, cooking in it and everything else. So uh, we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at uh, the first incidents of buying a, a fake one that we have. So I will be back. Okay, guys, uh, I am back. I'm going to try to get this little toolbar over here so you don't see that. Um, I am back, and I want to show you what kind of started all of this. Um, like I said before, I've been uh, collecting vintage cast iron now into my fourth year. And the first item that I came across was this uh, Griswold number 0, 562 is the part number. Griswold toy sample skillet. They call it a salesman demo or what have you. Um, you can see it says cast iron skillet like the Griswolds do. It's got the double cross logo and it's got the the uh, handle that Griswold is famous for, especially on their small block logo skillets. And, uh, you know, it was covered with a lot of seasoning and old crud and stuff like that when I picked it up. So it looked like the real deal to me. But this one is a, uh, a copy a knockoff, a reproduction, whatever you want to call it. And I, you know, I knew something seemed a little off with it, but I didn't give it a lot of thought because honestly, fakes and cast iron were beneath my radar. They shouldn't be beneath your radar, but they were be beneath my radar. So this was a non-genuine piece. Um, as you can see here, the font is uneven. The casting is uneven. It doesn't have clean lines. The heat ring is all right. But it's got a, a number, a, a mold mark lying on its side below the heat ring, which, you know, usually they would be down here somewhere on the handle. Um, the W is smaller than the rest of the Griswold font. It doesn't look even. Eerie is hardly legible. It almost looks like a recast there. And I wasn't paying a lot of attention, but you know, by the time I discovered the fact that it was a fake, um... I didn't want to drive all the way back down to the flea market, which is out of my area, and argue with the guy who probably wouldn't give me a refund anyway. So I thought, well, I posted it to my cast iron groups, and they said, oh, it has a value to it. You can just list it as a reproduction, which is exactly what I did. So as you can see here, uh, you can see another angle of it there. Again, it's very sloppy, um, and there's sloppy casting there on the surface. 
that is a restored fake, but it's actually in very good condition compared to the other fakes on the market. So, uh, but at any rate, we're going to get out of that one. We're going to show you what a real one looks like. Uh, the fakes are anywhere from $25 to $40 or so. Uh, the real ones are here. And let me see if I can bring it down a little bit. Oops. Okay. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, I have my window of recording. You can see cast iron skillet. You can see the neat font. Everything is uniform. The logo is uniform. The number is uniform. The handle uh, is more of a uh, legitimate handle. It's a teardrop with a uh, ribbing into the sidewall. You can see it better there. And you can see how everything is really nice, neat, and crisp. Even um, on the cooking surface, it's a cute little skillet. That's the real deal. It's worth anywhere from, you know, sometimes they go for lower prices, but based on condition, it's worth anywhere from 80 to 130 or so. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, but what spurred this video is that in combination with this one here, this one here was a picture of one similar to one of a barn sale I was looking to go to. This is a Wagnerware Sydney O uh, toy waffle iron, patent uh, February 22nd, 1910. It looks so cute. And I always evaluate pictures of items at estate sales and barn sales before I go to them. And when I looked at that, I thought, oh, cool, I'd like to get out there and grab it. But I wanted to make sure that it had uh, the right comps on eBay to even make it worth my while. It was a 45 minute drive there and back and then waiting once you got there. So I probably had an investment of time of, of three hours plus my actual monetary investment in the piece. And you, you have no idea what they were asking for it. And the last time I went there, their pricing was a little bit higher than I would have liked to have seen. So I hadn't scored anything in quite a while. So I looked on eBay and I will show you what that search looks like in a minute, but this guy here is actually not the real deal, okay? And I have several pictures of this guy here, but what the barn sale had was a fake fake item. And, you know, I don't know if they knew it or not. A lot of times people don't know it, but this is kind of what it looks like. And you can see here it's very sloppy. You can see the bail handle doesn't go all the way through. The short stubby handles, that part looks neat, but on the other side, it didn't look neat. And you can see here that the font isn't all even. The G and the N are smaller than the W and the A, and then Sydney O seems okay. It seems bigger than that. The 22 is exactly identical. Here's 1910, but that's what the fake looks like. And there's an upright um, picture of one of the paddles. And it just doesn't seem quite right. So we're going to go down and take a look at a real one. Let's go back and look at the picture again. And if you said the real one is on the right, you were correct. Um, it's so much more uniform. It's got the long handles. It's got the bail handle, which goes all the way through. We'll take a closer look at the real one. So I'm going to find it down here. There it is. You can see how clean lines it looks. All the fonts are, are um, uniform. They make the toy um, pieces with the care and detail that they make the larger pieces. And the ones that are faked most often are the ones that are uh, the most prolific out there. Uh, Wagnerware, Griswold, and even Lodge. Lodge was around back in the day even though they're still making pieces today. But this is the real deal. You've got the bail handles that go all the way through. You've got the longer wooden handles here. Everything looks nice and clean. That's the real deal, and it's worth a lot more than the fake, anywhere from probably 80 to 100 or more, depending on value. Not quite as much as a Griswold toy skillet, but it is uh, does have a value to it. Um, that's closer up. You can see the 22. They're not straight across like the fake. You can see that all the, the font is lining up. Sydney is a little bit bigger than Wagner, I believe, just by the way it's, uh, you know, on both the real and the uh, fake one. Uh, the long handles, 
and you can just see the differences there in the piece and we'll click out of that so most often the fakes are small items they're toys they're miniatures salesman demos samples whatever you want to call them but occasionally you might get a large one and this is uh i found this because the this was at a barn sale this uh wagner wear there that i never ended up going to instead of getting up early the next day i slept in saved myself a lot of time and hassle this one i was caught unawares but i prevented a, a mistake here Pre prevented a mistake here we're going to go ahead and load this one and you can't see that one quite as well but the handle looks kind of strange you have a heat ring and this was at an antique mall where I have a good relationship with people that work there. They call me when new pieces come in and they said there was a large skillet. It had uh, no markings whatsoever. They thought it was kind of strange. They said there was some sort of valley or dip on the cooking surface. And I thought, oh, could it have been a pitting or whatever? And I, I didn't know. And so I figured I'd go in and check it out there is the cooking surface there is the area that he was referring to it's just a casting flaw or what have you it's not even and you can see the handle here it looks kind of strange it looks like it might be welded on one side it looks uh, continuous the other side looks jagged uh, you got a tiny little pour handle looks kind of like BSNR but Lodge also has tiny pour handles on some of these skillets and we'll look closer up um let me see here if i can go ahead and uh there we go you can see there the line on the assist handle up at the top there that's unnatural you can see the divot right there uh does not seem right we're going to go to the next uh the next one let me see if i have it all the way down why it doesn't want to advance to the next one uh let's go here the underside of the handle looks correct. It looks like a lodge. And then this part seems like it's not, not right. That looks like it's welded on. I've never seen a handle look quite like that before on any kind of skillet. And then, of course, here's a close-up of the handle on the top side. No, no number here. Uh, no pattern number on the back. Uh, no number here on the top side. And this one, they wanted $65 for this thing. I said to the guy, I didn't want to hurt his feelings, but I said, you know what? Something looks off about this. I'm going to put out the feelers to my uh, my Facebook group and see if they can identify this. And that way I can help you guys out. So I didn't want to embarrass them or make them feel bad. So I did do that. There were a couple of Facebook groups that I put feelers out to. I'll link them below in the description if you guys want to join them. One is on cast iron identification and the other one is on... Um, just a cast iron community and you can put feelers out when you're out there on your smartphone you can actually take pictures on your smartphone and upload them to the group and you'll get answers relatively soon about what they think it is if they think it's a fake if they if they can identify it and believe it or not that's what I did with the chicken fryer they identified it as a vintage Wagner antique Wagner and I ended up picking it up this one here they confirmed my suspicions there's a tiny pour spout too just doesn't seem right you can see how large it is but they confirm my suspicions that it wasn't the real deal and uh, we're going to get off of this right now but i want to show you a couple of uh, ebay searches that show a number of these fakes are you know being sold right now on ebay okay so i will be back okay guys i'm back uh, this is the um search that you get when i typed in antique griswold number zero toy skillet 562 demo and of course this is mine and i kind of ran out of room but i put repro here in the title and this is mine and the next one is a real one you can see the uniformity there there's a lot of people want the real one this one has a lot of watchers this one is a fake uh they're not they don't say anything about it that it's a fake here it is here and I think I contacted them saying, do you have a fake? And they ignored me, completely ignored me. And we'll take a look at the piece here. And there it is. It's uh, kind of uneven casting. They have some, uh, look at the messy handle there, right in there. 
And you can see there that the fonts are all uneven. You can hardly read it. Of course, it's covered in crud. They didn't restore it at all. Hasn't been restored at all. And there might be a number there on the side, but it's too messy to see. I think you could basically see one. There's all his pictures coming up right there. But yeah, it is a uh, fake. And we're going to go back. We're going to X out of that. And let's go down and take a look at the listing. All he says is, Griswold, uncleaned, untouched condition. Condition is used. Doesn't indicate that it's a reproduction at all. And uh, so you don't... <laughs> You don't want to get involved with that, but there's a lot of these. You, you really need to, to know. This one here looks like it, it, it's labeled reproduction. So yeah, it hasn't been redone at all. Uh, like mine, mine is worth a little bit more than this one. This one here is just, you can't really see it, but it's, it's sloppy. It's got the sloppy casting there and you, uh, you know, very sloppy. I and mean, mine isn't really too bad when you look at it and I restored it. So it's available for anybody that's interested. Uh, email me at ladylibertystacker at gmail.com and uh, I can work with you um, as long as you're reasonable. <laughs> here's a fake one here. It looks like there's a bunch of these. And here's another one that looks like I, you know, mo more of these guys are fake. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, it's fake. You can tell that W is little. And uh, let's see. Here's a here's a real one. We'll go ahead and click on the picture. I believe it's real. Yeah, you can see, you can't see it too well, but all the the W is the same size as the rest of Griswold. And let's take a look at the handle. Take a look at the handle. Yeah, the handle's ribbed going into the sidewall, so that's good. The ones that are faked are usually the double grooved handles. So that's just case in point where there are many reproductions, and a lot of them are not labeled being sold on eBay. And the real ones are worth uh, some money here. If you take a look at solds, let's see if I can find it here. I can't. Oh, I have to go up here. Okay, click on sold listings. And we can see these look like the fakes. This one's $37. We'll take a look at this. Take a look at this. Go down here. Yep, it's one of the fakes. And they did not say uh, anything about it being a fake. Um, oh, yeah, down at the bottom. But you have to look for it. A lot of people don't even read this in the description. Um, I was told by eBay or this is a reproduction, like, like he doesn't really believe it, but it was me. I, I notified him because I was notified by a collector, and I changed my listing accordingly after I did some research. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get out of there. Okay, so anyway, we can see some of the real deal here, and this is a, a real good reproduction that's been completely redone, and that's my listing. Okay, next up is the um, antique February 22nd, 1910 Wagnerware Toy Waffle Iron Maker. And you can see here, these are real ones. That has a long handle. That has a long hand. Oh, that's a, that's a number eight. That's different. That's a number nine. That's different. Here's another uh, fake one. I notified them. They did change the listing and micro reproduction here. But they're trying to sell it for quite a bit. Here's a... Here's a uh, real one and if and here's other uh fake ones a lot of fake ones and they don't really say this one says a uh, vintage wagner miniature uh 49.99 and this one here's another fake and they want 85 dollars for it so there's they're not saying that it isn't the real deal uh this one here is just i'm gonna this is a lodge just want to show you this one this is a real lodge but it's it says vintage. It could be vintage, 1999. Um, but this is a real lodge. You can see the handle. Everything flows evenly. You can see everything's continuous. You can see how the handle is actually continuous and the way it's, it kind of flattens out at the side wall. It doesn't have that half circle thing. It's got the logo on the back and it's got, here's the underside of the handle. That's the only thing that looked legitimate on the fake skillet. So just letting you know about that. And so you look at the real deal 
You look at the fake, and if you know what a real one looks like, you can spot a fake. Just being aware of it, number one, and then um, knowing what the, what the real one looks like. And now we're going to go to Amazon here. And this is a book you can get, the book of Griswold and Wagner. Um, it has a bunch of different models that these companies put out. Also, Wapak, Sydney Hollowware, and a few other ones. And they talk about versions of the same skillet. There's a Griswold 7 small block logo, and it's got different handle versions on it. As long as you know what the real ones look like, and they do address the uh, reproductions in here, and the ones that are most likely faked on the Griswold skillet is the grooved handle. And then, so you want this one, and I can link it below if you guys want to take a look at that on Amazon. And then there's up also a couple websites, which I have below in the description. This one is a cast iron collector. It goes into all about the reproductions and counterfeits. And most they say most of the reproductions are confined to small novelty-sized items like miniature skillets and waffle irons. And they talk about the most commonly faked items are here. I'm not going to go over the whole article. You guys can click on it and read it for yourselves. But uh, the key here to making good purchases or to not buying something you will regret is knowledge. you got to get knowledgeable here. Uh, here's another site, and it goes into the most commonly faked pieces. And they, if you click on one, here's the number zero Griswold. And they show what the, uh, uh, the early handle the late handle, these are both legitimate handles. And here's a groove handle. And this is real because you can see everything is clean. But you see no number lying on the side there. These are fakes. That one I've never seen before, but it doesn't look right. It just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right, guys. Do your research. Here's one that I have. It's got the uneven uh, casting on the cooking area. And it's got the uneven, this one looks like a pretty good example of a fake, but it's got the just uneven. It's just not the same. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to, uh, you know, bring this to everybody's attention and focus just on fake versus real. Uh, please leave a question below in the comment section. Give me a thumb up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I uh, look forward to interacting with you guys. Um, thanks for watching and go make it a great day.